It's the final preview. Ben -ben -ben -ben. Hello everybody, Dan Ward with the Ward on Sports. This is the NL West preview for 2021. The NL West comes down to one thing. Will the Padres be able to take down the Dodgers? the reigning World Series champions, and the clear best team in baseball. The Dodgers' biggest moves were losing Blake Trinan and Jock Peterson to free agency, but making sure that they re-signed Justin Turner. The Padres, meanwhile, grabbed three different aces from three different teams and shirt up their bullpen with players like Mark Melanson and Keon Kella. The biggest names that they lost were Kirby Yates and Garrett Richards, among others, but those are the two biggest names that stood out to me. Otherwise, we can go back and forth between these two teams. They are going to be neck and neck in all categories. The starting pitching staffs maybe give the edge to the Dodgers. Offensively, maybe give the edge to the Dodgers. In the bullpen, you probably give the edge to the Dodgers. They are the best team in baseball. They've been the best team in baseball over the last few years. They just finally broke through and finally won the World Series, albeit and a shortened 60-game regular season and a season that was impacted by the COVID-19 virus. So there are people out there that will say, well, it was a fluke of a World Series. Dodgers still have to prove that they are the best team over a full MLB season. And that may light the fire under them. Maybe they say, all right, we're not content with just one. We want to go out and win another one. And they end up winning 110 games and plowing through the playoffs and winning another World Series. Very easily could happen. Would not surprise me at all if that's what happened. Maybe the Dodgers are content now. They finally won, so they yield up a little bit and they relax, take a few games off. Maybe they don't feel the pressure at all, and now they play relaxed and they actually do even better than they did in the past. Maybe they have a bit of a World Series hangover and stumble just enough or have a slow start of the year, and that's enough for the Padres to steal away the division. Maybe Tatis Jr. is the MVP of the season. Maybe the starting five of the Padres outpitches the starting five of the Dodgers. Maybe Manny Machado finally lives up to being a $300 million player. Maybe Kershaw finally looks old. Trevor Bauer was a one-hit wonder. Corey Seager struggles in his contract year. The odds of all these things happening? They're not great, but they're not completely out of the air either. It's going to take some for the Padres to dethrone the Dodgers, but they're going to be must-watch baseball all season long. For instance, Chris Pratt Paddock was one of their top two pitchers a season ago. Now all of a sudden, he is the fourth in their rotation. You find me a better fourth starting pitcher among any team, except maybe the Dodgers, but even then, Julio Urias versus Chris Paddock would be a tough battle. It'd be a very tough argument to find a better fourth starter in the league. So the Dodgers have depth, experience, and overall talent on their side, but the Padres are hungry, they have youth, they have excitement, and they have the media backing them to want them to be the team that dethrones the Dodgers. They love Fernando Tatis, people want him as the face of baseball, they're going to push his story as much as possible, the highlights are going to be all around the Padres as well as the Dodgers, San Diego is going to suddenly become a bigger media market this season, and it's all going to be because of the Padres. The biggest thing for me is that the Padres did form this team in a lot of ways with money and buying their players. Which sounds really weird when you're talking about the Padres versus the Dodgers. The Dodgers have bought players as well, but they also have a lot of homegrown talent that they brought up. And we've seen in all sports, except maybe basketball, that it is hard to win a championship when you're buying players. Not saying that's all the Padres have done. They have Fernando Tatis as the prime example for players that have come up through their system. But bringing in a bunch of star players and expecting to win that way can be tough. I still think that they are going to be one of the best teams in baseball. I have them with the third best record overall, so I don't think it is unlikely or impossible for them to win with all these great players, but it just has that feel of his history not playing out in their favor in which you bring in a bunch of guys from other teams and expect them to gel and be a cohesive unit and win. There have been teams that are much worse on paper that win because they've grew up together We've seen it as a Phillies fan with the 2008 Phillies. They were not the best team in baseball, but they had one of the best units, and it worked. Saw it with the Nationals also. Not the best team, but their clubhouse was probably the strongest, and they end up winning the World Series. You don't need it to win, but I think it helps, and that is the one slight edge to the Dodgers, aside from all the others, actually. But that is one, the one thing keeping the Padres from me being very confident or certain 
that they can win the division and then ultimately the World Series. Other quick storylines with the other three teams. Diamondbacks don't really have much to talk about. I think they're going to be a, a sub-500 team. They will finish in third in the division, but not very exciting. Not many great storylines. Let's be rebuilding, retooling a bit, trying to prep for next season and trying to get back to some NL West relevancy. Giants, I think, are the most interesting team of the bottom three. I actually really like Gabe Kapler and his style, his attitude in San Francisco specifically. I think he's going to bring a lot of good elements to that team. Right now, they have a good combo of really old players and really young, talented players. So be very interesting to see how that unit gels. Buster Posey is coming back. He's going to be interesting to watch. He took off last season. He used to be one of the best players in the game. What can he provide to this Giants team that is still clearly rebuilding, but on their way up? And then will the Rockies trade away Trevor Story, German Marquez, John Gray, Charlie Blackman, all the other best players on their team like they did Nolan Arenado? Or are they going to hold up a middle finger, finger to the world, go major league style, and say, you know what, you think our team's crap just because we traded away our best player, one of the best players in baseball, and didn't get a great return? Well, screw you. We're going to go be a good team anyway. Unlikely that it'll happen. I still I have them as a 100-loss team, but... Hey, Colorado's weird playing up in the thin air of the Rocky Mountains can create for a lot of weird things to happen. So at home, they may be dominant. If they can take some of that on the road, they could surprise us. So don't really have that great of expectations for the Rockies, but I would love to be surprised. I'd love to see them shake it up and cause some drama in the West. The MLB season is here. 162 games expected to be played. First, let's just hope for a safe and healthy season. And then... Let's hope for a full and exciting one. So many good teams this year. The NL is stacked. We got storylines across all six divisions. 2021 is going to be a lot of fun. More content and videos coming your way, so be sure to keep an eye out on the channel. Thank you all for watching and for all of your support. Once again, I am Dan Ward. This is The Ward on Sports. Talk to you all next time.